Rated M for Mature. Sega. Oh, the original Golden Axe, it was just kind of like, you know, it was 1989, I guess. You know, I was just finishing high school and this game just kind of really fit the time for me. I used to get on my little bicycle and I used to ride six miles down to the seaside in the north of England just to play arcade games. Golden Axe was number one on the list. I pumped quarter after quarter, dollar after dollar, my entire month's allowance on trying to beat this game. It hinted at this really amazing world and, and fully fleshed out worlds that at the time, not many games were able to, to create. It stood the test of time in terms of its theme and its, its, its uh, unique look. People like myself remember so fondly from the arcade, it's literally hack and slash, hack and slash, hack and slash. In an ancient world, a barbarian hero, a Viking dwarf, and an Amazonian warrior set out on a mission to save their king and queen from the evil Death Adder. This is the story of the classic side-scrolling adventure of Golden Axe, which first appeared in arcades back in 1989. Created by Makoto Uchida, the game would become one of Sega's most popular and beloved franchises. The team was very small, almost the two programmers and two artists and one planner and one sound, just only five or six around that. A small, small team and we made that by the 12 months. I really love the movie, any kind of movie, but the, the most favorite is the action movie. And I really love the Arnold Schwarzenegger's Conan. When I saw that, I really want to make the same as that kind of movie thing in the video game, especially the arcade video game, because I was a really fan of the arcade. The first time I went to college, I dropped out because there was a really good arcade at the mall just past my campus. And too many mornings, I would just drive right past the campus and go to the arcade and play Golden Axe. And it's one of those games where you just sit there and keep feeding the quarters until you beat it. I spent way too many quarters on that game, but Golden Axe always just seemed something special because I really, I liked the medieval world more than anything else. The arcade game is the three minutes game. Within three minutes, we have to keep player as much as possible fun things. Without that, they just stop to play after three minutes and never play it again. The pacing of it, I think, works so well. It goes from like one encounter to the next, one battle to the next, and the game's music is really good, really catchy. I think anyone who's played it can still do the tune for you. The basic concept design for the, one of my artists, he drew the great background and also character, and at that time, he is right on one of the beasts in the auto beast. <laughs> so when I saw that, that was a great idea, so I just put that into the video game. I think that Part of what it did right was the beasts. I really liked being able to jump on top of something and just feeling like, okay, that's it, I own you. That's it, like I'm on a purple chicken, you cannot touch me. I know people keep saying beast, 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 but it is actually very cool. Hands down, it's the beasts. I think it's what uh, keeps this game separate from a lot of other games, you know? I, I couldn't get enough of writing those beasts and was always a little bit upset when I got thrown off. Fighting to keep my purple chicken through as much of the level as I possibly could. That was really important to the way that I played Golden Axe anyway. The magic was like a perk on top of that. The biggest challenge was the how to make the great visual magic effects things. When you play the video game, you see almost 15 or more magic graphics. The whole system of leveling up your magic is cool because you want to save your magic and see the really cool effects, which, you know, back at the time, those things were mind-blowing. You know, the screen would shake. You're just like, yeah, that kicks so much ass. When I go to the arcade and I see my game in the arcade, kids playing the game and just totally fun face. That was awesome, great experience for me. And I thought, oh, I never stopped to be make the video game. The introduction of the Sega Genesis in 1988 ushered in a new era for Sega, establishing the game maker in the Japanese home console arena. But with the system set to launch a year later in North America, Sega needed a killer application to cement their presence across the Pacific. To this end, Sega turned to their arcade success and the easy to play yet difficult to master experience of Makoto Uchida's Golden Axe. Expanding on the beat-em-up genre with the introduction of hack-and-slash gameplay, 
Golden Axe quickly became the game for owners of the Sega Genesis and firmly established Sega as a major player in the video game realm. It was really the first time on a console you were able to play what you were also able to uh, play in the arcades. And if you think about it, I mean, now people play the consoles, there's no question that it's the top-notch graphical quality. But for a long time, there was this huge gap between what you'd go to the arcade to play. And to be able to come home and play on your Genesis, this game that was so similar to what you were playing in the arcade was really amazing. When Golden Axe came out for Genesis, I was like, oh, I can save all my quarters. And then I didn't. I wound up playing it in both places anyway. I saw that to my parents that the parents was really surprised. <laughs> they didn't know the game itself, and also they didn't know what kind of game I made. Inevitably, the success of Golden Axe led to the creation of several sequels and spin-offs. However, none of the games were able to capture the glory of their predecessor. The other ones, no, I didn't really play. I remember Golden Axe 2. I always heard that, you know, Golden Axe, the first one, was the best. My experience of the sequel is only Golden Axe the Revenge of the Third. The other Golden Axes are actually not mine. After a lengthy absence, Golden Axe re-emerged on the scene in 2006 alongside Golden Axe 2 and 3 as part of the featured compilation with the Sega Genesis collection. But more importantly, during the E3 of that year, Sega announced the development of a brand new Golden Axe game for the next generation of gaming systems. Back in, uh, I guess it was probably 2005 at this point, um, we were uh, talking with Sega and, and knew that we wanted to do a project together as companies. And we knew that they were interested in going back and looking at their old licenses and old IP and uh, figuring out how to reinvent some of them. And so we started looking at all of them and said, you know, which of these really inspires us? And Golden Axe instantly jumped out. I mean, it's a classic for a lot of people. What was really cool was sitting down with Sega, having a conversation with Noah and the guys over at Sega and looking at the back catalog and being able to go, oh, that would be so cool. Oh, no, wait, that would be cool. Oh, dude, Golden Axe. That would just be awesome. So being able to have that dialogue and look through and think about things that we thought we could bring our spin to and that we could make fresh and revisit, Golden Axe was just the top of the list for us. Our approach is to reopen and re-explore the world of Golden Axe. We can't make a copy. The game's 20 years old. It's a side-scroller. Sure, there's a jump to 3D, but really more so than that, it's a reimagination, if you will, where we kind of dissect the old Golden Axe game and then really pull out the legacy content that's really special, then we build and explore that in more detail in our game. The first time I heard of Secret Level was at the California Extreme Arcade Show. It's a big collector's arcade show. Nothing but classic coin ops set to free play. These guys know old school stuff. They know the retro stuff. They know where our whole industry has come from. So to find out that they're rebuilding a classic franchise, I'm thinking, well, at least I know they've got the cred for it. You know, I know that they're out here as gamers enjoying the old stuff, but they're also studying the old stuff as students. I'm very impressed with them, you know. Uh, they have a lot of passion and enthusiasm. I think it's pretty clear that everyone here is taking the game seriously. It's good to know. It, just from talking to some of the folks that did it that also grew up on Golden Axe, it seems that they know what things about that series that made it such a legend in the arcade. So it seems like, you know, they have the right approach. They're really dedicated to making sure that the final product is really something special rather than just Sega partnering with a company that would put out a really basic 3D-ified version of Golden Axe. They're actually willing to go out on a limb and say, okay, we're going to go with this very bold, big adventure game now.